Hey folks, welcome to Life on Beagle Road. It is hay delivery day, so I thought it would be a great time to talk about what you should be feeding your goats and what you shouldn't be feeding your goats. All right, so here is lesson one. That bale of hay got wet, so I will not feed it to my animals. Do not feed your animals wet, moldy, or dusty hay. Bad news all around. A bale of hay in your area, a small bale like this, might be anywhere from four to seven, eight dollars a bale, and I promise you, you will spend way more money trying to get your herd health back on track if you feed food that is bad. We have a local farmer that we typically purchase from. We get grass hay and uh, straw from him pretty regularly. He lets us know when he's got the nice, long, fine bales of hay because he knows that that's what I want for my goats. And he gets it, right? He's not trying to sell me bales that he can't sell for horses. So that's something I really appreciate about him. One thing he doesn't have is any alfalfa hay. So I just found someone who's gonna be delivering today. They're selling mixed bales. They're half grass hay, half alfalfa, which is great, especially right now because I haven't been feeding alfalfa. I feed some pellets, but I don't have any of it in bales. So it'll be a good way to introduce it. But this is the first time I'm getting hay from them. So I am gonna show you what I do to make sure that it's good quality. This stuff looks awesome, but before before we unload everything, I'm gonna cut this bale open. If you're buying hay from someone and they don't want you to cut the bale open to check it, you don't want their hay. Got it? Let's get this unloaded and uh, we'll talk more about it. So let's talk about what this hay looks like. Hey, Mau Mau. Can I, can I look at this please? Now this is a 50% grass, 50% alfalfa mix. When I cut this bale open, I was looking for the basic things first. It's not moldy, it's not wet, and it's this nice, consistent color the whole way through. Like I said, the bales looked really good from the outside, but you still wanna cut one open and make sure it's not moldy or wet. These long, thin pieces are really important for goats. This is what keeps their rumen working, digesting these nice, fine pieces of hay. In your alfalfa or other legume hay, you'll find some bigger pieces. You are gonna find some random things in your grass hay, Whoop. but that's okay. You know, if they've got a good color, that's good forage. You know, the best thing you can look for is, does it have nice fine pieces like this? Are they long? Length is important so that they're not wasting it. And it also keeps it from getting dusty. And uh, it's the color good. I mean, this stuff looks really great. I'm excited about it. I bet you the animals will be too. Let me show you. All right, guys, I need a taste tester. Can I get a taste tester? Come here, come here, come here. I know you will come here. Come here. There you go. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. Gonna get it on the action bell. Peekaboo's digging it. Alpacas are pretty picky like goats. Like they'll pick the stems out of stuff and throw it on the ground or just leave them in the feeder. So the alpacas are eating it. That is good. Oh yeah. Get it girl. Eat it. Alpacas are all, also a semi-ruminant, so they uh, it's important for them to have the long stems also. And the protein in a legume hay is good for anyone, especially as uh, winter's coming around, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll fill up your bags with that, guys. 
So let me show you what I'm taking out of the bag first. This is the stuff we had most recently. A second cutting, actually I even think this was first cutting because it was all that was available. The first cutting grass hay. And as you can see, no one's super excited about it. It's not nearly as green. So this is the alfalfa and this is the grass hay. You can see the green difference there. This is still green, but not as green. And you can see the stems on here are thicker. So that's why they're not as excited about it. They'll pick through it, you know, eat what, what is good. So it's not that this is bad, but I am way happier with the stuff we just got. Everybody is out here chowing down on this hay. That the good stuff peekaboo let's summarize what we've talked about with hay you want something that is not wet moldy or dusty when you get it and you need to make sure that it's not wet moldy or dusty when you feed it you want something that looks green you know when you hold it next to your bale of straw it looks green um, if you can stock up on it in the fall so that you can make it through the spring with that good quality hay that is for sure the thing to do if you can't i totally understand and there have been times where we couldn't there's just no you can only store so much of it but that first cutting in the spring is just kind of yellowy and thick and just not yummy some people will try to sell those as goat hay versus horse hay and uh no goats want the good quality horse hay too so do alpacas you want it to feel kind of soft not so crunchy those long thin soft pieces of hay are what keeps the goats rumen moving and alpacas are a semi-ruminant too so it's important for them as well if you've got access to good quality hay all year round you might be able to feed your bucks weathers pet goats on just hay i supplement with grain because i really want our does in particular to reach their full potential and to get to the full capacity size of their body and of course our does and milk and does that are pregnant really need those additional calories and sometimes we've got first cutting hay and it's not so awesome it was a rough year for alfalfa so finding these 50 percent bales was was awesome it's hard to grow alfalfa when it's super wet which it has been for like two years i put half a small bale in these bags out here and it is going to be gone in no time they are chowing down on this stuff they are happy When I can't find alfalfa or another legume hay, I supplement with alfalfa pellets to uh, keep that protein content up. But the pieces are obviously better. That's what keeps the rumen moving. I'm especially glad to find it right now as it's getting cooler. We've got some pregnant animals. We have uh, a buckling over here that sold and is gonna travel to New York in the coming weeks. So I want him to be really in tip-top shape for that trip and of course a lot of the forage is dying back right now and uh, some of the stuff in the the pastures is dying so it's even more important for us to have a good quality hay right now the good news is this time of year it's a little bit easier to find it speaking of grain let's talk about what else I am feeding my goats let's start with what I feed the bucks because that's pretty simple I mentioned if I can't find alfalfa hay, I am feeding them some alfalfa pellets. Here they are. They don't love the alfalfa. alfalfa pellets by themselves. I mean, they'll eat them eventually, but not their favorite. Uh, and I do mix that with a commercial goat feed. Let's see if I can pick the parts out of here. Let me show you exactly which commercial feed I'm using. Um, I want to switch to a mill soon. But, you know, just, I gotta go do it. But anyway, if you are buying a small amount at a time, that's what I'm using. The Do More Pelleted Goat Feed Formula. It has ammonium chloride added, which isn't a guarantee, but it is always good to feed that if you are giving grain to bucks or weathers uh, because of urinary calculi. Certainly doesn't hurt doughs either. I mix this into my dough feed as well. All right, so important things 
that you are going to look for. You always want to check this before you buy a goat feed because what's really important is you need to look at the calcium to phosphorus ratio. The minimum amount of calcium in this per serving is 0.75%, maximum is 1.25%, and the phosphorus is about 1.35%. So basically what that means is you always want your calcium to be double or even up to quadruple uh, the amount of phosphorus that's in a feed. It's that calcium to phosphorus ratio that causes urinary calculi. So important to think about that for all of your goats, extra important for weathers and bucks. Hit it! That's what I'm talking about! Wait! Hit it, boys. talk food but first we're gonna do our little walk around and check everybody's butt hmm yeah a little bit there good good <laughs> all right I'm watching Rihanna to see if she's coming into heat so I'll have to look at her again here in a minute. Maybe I should put the camera down for this and just show you what I'm doing instead of trying to show you the actual butts. Yes, so let's do that. Everybody looks good, other than dandelion honey. She's got a little, yeah. But I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. Honestly, they all got into a little more grain than they should have yesterday, so it could simply be that. Her vomacha looks fine, so we'll just keep an eye on it over the next day or so. All right, so what all is in this food that they're going nuts over? I'm gonna take a little, little rest out here, a little opportunity to just hang out with the goats. <laughs> anyway, what's in that feed? Well, what is in that feed might be a little bit of my hang up in going the commercial feed route too. The same do more goat feed that I give the bucks, alfalfa pellets, black oil sunflower seeds, and calf manna, equal parts of each. I don't give it to the bucks and the weathers because that calf manna is a totally different calcium to phosphorus ratio thing. So I don't want to cause urinary calculi there. And that's also why I don't just feed that straight to the does either. Right now I'm also sprinkling on top of there um, a top dress called Goatzilla, really high in uh, good fat and protein. I'm trying to bulk these mamas up. I mean, honestly, the, the does that are pregnant and will be nursing, um, you know, there's a lot of stress put on their body, so that's important. I think the other thing that you'll hear from, from some people is if you're feeding grain during pregnancy, you're going to get big babies. I ate a truly exceptional amount of food with both of my daughters, um, and I was much better with Robbie. Robbie was over nine pounds. The girls were both under eight pounds, so. <laughs> anecdotal evidence, but in reality, genetics is what plays into the size of babies. Unless there's something going on like gestational diabetes, what you're feeding the goats will only have a positive impact on the growth of the baby. They're gonna be healthy, they're gonna be strong, and that's what we want. Hmm, let's see what everybody's doing over here. What we've got in the dishes over here are minerals. We've got Sweet Licks goat minerals. So if you don't lick the lens, please, and do not pull that out of the microphone. Don't do that. These are the minerals. It's 
a temporary space out here, so we've got temporary dishes of minerals. The other thing that we have over there is dried kelp. Dried kelp is a great source of iodine, and iodine deficiency can cause birth defects. Let me grab that so you can see. You will often see goats do what Stevie just did, which is eat and then come get some minerals to kind of supplement what they're feeling like they're needing. They'll eat the stuff free choice. You should always make sure it's out. Your bucks and weathers also need minerals. It's important for them for copper and cobalt, selenium, and it also helps with their rumen. It helps with the calcium to phosphorus ratio. So I really just can't say enough about how important minerals are. This is the first year I've added kelp. Never had an issue with iodine deficiency, but you know, not looking to start. My feed is assuredly a little over the top. You could easily feed what I'm feeding the bucks, a commercial goat feed and some alfalfa pellets. You know me and goats, I am always a little over the top. But this mix of feed, if you do have somebody who's lost weight or had a parasite infestation that's cleared up and you wanna get the weight back on, them, you want to get them back up to, to the best shape they can be in, doling that's growing slowly, anything like that, this could, this could help. You know, it's lots of fat and protein. What is the most important thing for your goats to have to eat? Browse! It's browse! They want to browse for their food. They like to nibble a little of this, a little of that. Yeah, that's why they like variety. That's why sometimes you gotta mix up your hay. Not abruptly, they'll get an upset tummy, but they do get sick of eating the same thing. They're just like people. You guys know how I feel about those people who make jokes about buying goats so you don't have to mow your grass? Don't make those jokes, mow your grass. But what you don't have to do is pick up your leaves or trim your low hanging branches or uh, kill your poison ivy because these guys will take care of it. The best thing you can do for your goats is give them a place to browse and forage for their food. You'll see the similarity with this grass and what I was talking about with the hay, right? It's long pieces and it's soft, even as it's drying out now. So that's what we're trying to mimic with the hay is what they're out here choosing to eat. I'm not done talking about hay. Our regular hay guy came and he brought this. Do you see this? This is like practically neon green. This is like goat gold. I'm so excited to feed this to them. But I need to go put it outside to make me all itchy. Struggle is real when you're allergic to your favorite animal's food. I've never seen anybody get so excited about hay before in my life. Well, you've been missing out. All the best people get excited about hay. Thanks for watching my rant on hay. Don't forget to subscribe so you can come back and hear even more fascinating information about goats. See you soon.